ladies and gentlemen, comprehensive coverage of hurricane season from Thor News continues. But first, I got to remind you, I do a monthly fundraiser uh, to pay the bills and keep Thor News up and running. And so if you would like to make a contribution, I got a snail mail, a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron, and only $1,654 left to raise over the next five days. So if you'd like to make a contribution for all my hard work, I would really, really appreciate it. And every single dollar helps. Okay. But first, before we get to the hurricane or tropical storm it is now, let us talk about the 4.3 earthquake that everybody in Los Angeles apparently felt. They said it was quite a rumbler. We had an earthquake during the Mars launch. Good, good thing they rehearsed for contingency. And on top of that, overnight, we've had another wave named, or they put up an X. So not only do we have to deal with Tropical Storm Isaias, which is a potential hurricane, we have a new player on the board, which has a 20% chance of development. And so 2020 is continuing to get more 2020 year. Between my own fundraiser, the possible unemployment ben benefits getting not extended, which would make 30 million people, uh, have problems paying their bills right before possible evacuation scenarios, and then just the overall state of affairs, hurricane season, landfalling hurricane, I think I got an ulcer. And uh, as your planetary defense commander, I got to bring you the news as I see it, um, without the sugar and the spoon this close to landfall. Um, it appears that Tropical Storm Isaias has taken the path of least resistance and has squeezed through the Mona, Mona Passage, which means it basically went right between the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, which means the hoped for big land interaction, the hurricane killer terrain of Haiti and the Dominican Republic will not be inhibiting its development much. And this thing is only like 72 hours away from potential impact to Miami and Florida. And I've never seen the models in disagreement on where it was going to be about three days from now. Although with Hurricane Hannah, they didn't really know what they were doing either. So definitely buckle up, smoke them if you got them, and kiss your mama for luck if you can. Although I guess you should kiss your mama first and then smoke later because your mom probably doesn't like you smoking. We are praying for a miracle and an out-to-sea option, but we are going to prepare for a landfalling tropical storm or hurricane. Now, aren't we? Grant Gilmore, Morning Model, runs the shift to the east continues, but the next 12 hours or so and interaction with Hispaniola will greatly dictate the track from there. A western track means a weaker storm, while an easterly track could allow the storm to strengthen to a hurricane. And I think now that it's split the passage, it could go from hurricane from here to here in my opinion. And then you've got another storm that'll be moving through the Appalachian Mountains and the Ohio Valley, which will bring additional rainfall and possible flooding to some areas. But you can see here how it's slipping through. And I would guess that at some point, this thing is going to be a hurricane. And then we've got the next one off the coast. God, please help us all. Right now, Tropical Storm Isaias is at 1,003 millibars of pressure. Technically, it would only need to drop about nine more millibars over 72 hours to get to hurricane pressure. Although hurricanes are gauged off a wind speed of over 74 miles per hour, I believe sustained. Okay. And here we're looking at the tropical storm Isaias early cycle intensity guidance. And we're looking at the forecast models. And as you can see, there are several models that take it to category one and under 72 hours. And there are models that take it to Category 2, and even Category 4. So, um, I mean, there are some that keep it at a, let's say about half, half keep it at a tropical storm, the other half bring it into a hurricane, and then two of them take it to a stronger hurricane and one even major hurricane class. So this is definitely going to be quite an adventure. Uh, the models have half of it now, I would say, have some type of landfalling option and then there are i would say about 30 or 40 percent that don't that have an out to sea option so miracles are still possible and at this point i'm not guaranteeing anything that's going to happen as far as intensity or location i'm just going to totally be concerned about it and stare at this thing until it passes 
and is done whenever that happens to be. Did I mention that I've been working almost nonstop since? About two weeks before Hurricane Hannah, telling you what would be up, and then Hurricane Douglas, and now with Tropical Storm Isaiah. And so if you would like to contribute, it would be greatly appreciated. But please take care of yourself and your family first. These are crazy days, but if you have any extra scratch left over for me, I would appreciate it. I give it my all and leave it all in the field for you. And this technically is kind of a worst case scenario because it passes through the Mona Passage the, without uh, the low level of circulation being totally ripped apart by mountains and land interaction. There's no telling what it's going to do when it passes through here. It's no telling what it's going to do over the next 48 hours, where exactly it's going to go. But this was not what our optimal option we were hoping for it to go square over the middle of the Hispaniola Island, so which would it, they call it a hurricane killer if it goes that passage, but that did not happen. Because, of course, it's 2020. We can see on first visible light that it is bubbling, bubbling, and it's toiling, and it's troubling. Now let's do a model breakdown, if you don't mind. Um, here we have the GFS latest run. It actually keeps it offshore, this gives us a pure Dorian option. And so no landfall. And technically, that is exactly what we want. And so if the Dorian option happens and if people on Friday are like, you said it would hit with a hurricane and it didn't hit, I'd be like, hey, man, technically I said I didn't know what was going to happen. I gave guesses, but I'm very glad that it did not hit land. We have enough problems in 2020, especially with the damn plague and people fighting all the time. Now, here's the scarier option. This has it making landfall pretty much in Miami as a strong tropical storm on Sunday. And it is Thursday today, if you did not know. So this would take it, and remember, now it's only going to drop 9 millibars of pressure in 72 hours with not a ton of inhibiting factors. So I'm, I would guess this thing is going to be a hurricane before it gets to the North Carolina area. But that is a guess. But I, I think people should prepare either way, especially if you're in Miami and in Florida. Because this option would take it, like let's say it got to a category two or three, and then boom, it would take it straight through Miami, go into Tampa Bay, pull over into Orlando, Jacksonville, and then go up the coast and just past New York, New Jersey, and New England. And so this would be a very bad situation for Florida, Miami, especially if it did intensify over the next 72 hours. This is the GFS para model. We have two different models just so they can help us keep us guessing. It stays off of Florida, and it's just weird to have the GFS and the Euro be so far apart 72 hours out. But the GFS totally missed Hurricane Hannah until the moment it formed, pretty much. This takes it straight up, and this is almost a worst-case scenario because then it, it would strengthen. It would just brush the nose of the OBX, and then it would go straight into... New York pretty much and New Jersey as a category two, category three ish type hurricane. And that would bring a lot of storm surge, a lot of wind, a lot of flooding, and then it would just carry on through the northeast. That would be a very bad option. The gem has basically a straight into Florida as a tropical storm. This would take it, but this had it going over the Hispaniola the full thing so it would probably get better development than what this model predicted but it would have it going straight into florida and then up the shaft as a strong tropical storm then curving back out to the east through new york but this would keep it as a tropical storm and then we have the nav gem which would have it hitting new york is about a category one category two hurricane 980 millibars of pressure and then we get the spinning wheel this this one always looks like a thumbprint. This gets very close to Florida, just like Dorian. Doesn't do any, doesn't hit, rides up the coast, and then boom, goes through North Carolina, up through New Jersey, into New York, and then out of Massachusetts, like the thumbprint, as a Category 1, Category 2 hurricane. That would be very bad as well. And then we've got the Icon making landfall in North Carolina, and then heading on its way, what it looks like, through the New Jersey, New York option. And so most of these models have some type of a landfall for Tropical Storm or Hurricane Isaiah's. 
like I said, with it slipping through the Mona Passage just moments ago, that means it's got a better chance of intensification. So it is 2020. Everyone from Miami, the entire state of Florida needs to watch this and have some type of preparations in case it does become a major hurricane or just, a, you know, category two, category three. But I know Floridians are tough and most of them have made it through all hurricanes and would probably stay. But it's up to you and your family to make the decisions. This would be the storm behind it, which would be Josephine. So we could potentially have another storm headed towards the coast. After, right as this one is passing out. That's the worst case scenario. We will have to track that. We got a cranky weather guy doing some what he does best, which is whether if we focus on the vapor footprint instead of using some markers waypoints changes in opposing flows the results are similar and repetitive however the returning the tumbling nature of the pattern drivers the gfs loops it'll be some time before this envelope tightens and so we've got a wide envelope anywhere from straight into florida to out to sea which is pretty odd for uh three to five days out in my opinion water Footprint sleuthing can be tricky as the footprint can move around by the time the critical moment arrives. Yet it does frequently work. Chick Jacobs, certainly a harbinger, land interaction may well be scraping together a new future for Isaiah's safe from the mountains. By the way, that would be a full degree north of the northern edge of the National Hurricane Center projections at this point. Uh, yeah, pro projections and models haven't done too great, but this has pretty much slipped through the Mona Passage as Dadabu, the Florida Wave Master, said happens often path of least resistance and the new system off the africa coast appears to be quite organized this morning with modest low level rotation honestly a little puzzled at how this even this isn't even an invest at this moment uh, it's like they don't want to worry people or scare people or something and then with all the gas giants on the same side all the planets on the same side the jupiter saturn conjunction we're going to be on the lookout for more earthquakes and volcano eruptions throughout the year it's it's just going to get 2020 here, man. So I will be here hyper tracking the system for you guys. If you can and would like to donate and contribute for all my work, I would really appreciate it and help me help my stress stress levels go down. I got a uh, snail mail, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Patron. I've only got sixteen hundred and fifty four dollars left to raise with five days left to go. And I got to say super thank you to Mike, Andy, Robert, Bennett, Matthew, Jess, Angel, Wagon Breath and Dan. Thank you to everybody out there in Astro Fight Club who's saying prayers and staying cool for all of us. Only together we will keep it together. And so everyone stay cool, and I will talk to you all in the next few hours. Peace out. God bless everyone.